everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I'm so excited to have you here today. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, be sure that you are. I post lots of fun tips, tricks, and crafts over there that you don't want to miss out on. Today's video is one that I've been wondering about and wanting to make for a while, and it is what is the difference between HTV and sublimation. We're going to go over all sorts of great information today, so be sure to have your notebooks ready, your minds open. I'm going to show you how to upload the designs, size them, print them, everything that you need to do to create them, and we're going to talk about what makes HTV and sublimation different. So let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. I'm going to show you how to upload the design to use for the HTV. So what we're going to do is, of course, in Cricut, we're going to click Upload, and then I'm going to click Upload Image. Now, I could browse for the image, but I always just keep my folder open so that I can just drag and drop it. Find that folder, and we're going to use the SVG, which in my computer shows as an HTML document, but it's totally fine. That's what we want to use. So we're going to be using this cute Don't Be Jelly image, and I'm going to click Upload. Once it's in my recently uploaded images, I can select it and add it to the canvas. Once it's added to my canvas, I can simply resize it to however big I want to make this. So I'm putting this on an adult large shirt, but I want to keep it in line with the same size of the sublimation design just so that it gives you a better visual. So what I want to do is first I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees because I can actually size it a little bit easier this way because it is wider than it is tall. So that being said, I can make it a little bit like this where it's gonna just kind of help me figure out about how big I can make it. So I'm gonna make it 8.2, I think exactly wide. That way we get like a better idea of how big we can make it for our sublimation. Now because we're cutting with HTV, we need to make sure to mirror our image. I like to use the flip option on my canvas and I'm gonna flip it horizontal. That is going to mirror your image so that now when we go to press it, it'll face the correct way. So that's just something to think about. Now if it's bothering you, you can totally turn it back to your rotation. Sometimes it doesn't like to rotate the way you think it should. It's up to you and how you wanna do it. You could absolutely not rotate it. I just do that because it's a little bit easier for me and my brain to compute it. Now when I go to make it, you'll see that we have all of our layers ready to go. Our black layer, our blue layer, and our pink layer. So we're good to go on that. Now I'm gonna cut this all with StarCraft Softflex, which cuts on the everyday iron-on setting. So it's really easy to use. We'll get this all cut out and weeded, and then we'll show you the difference between the HTV and sublimation. We're gonna use Inkscape to print out our sublimation design. So all we simply need to do is kind of very similar to Design Space, where we can just drag and drop our image. So I'm gonna to go to my folder, and for this one, you can use the SVG or the PNG. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put them both in just so you can see that they look pretty much the same. So you're not going to be able to really tell the difference between which one you choose. The only reason I like to use the SVG a little bit more is because the edges, do you see how the box touches the edges of our image like it did in Design Space? You'll notice with the PNG, it doesn't do that. So sizing them to be the same size might be a little more difficult with the PNG. So I'm gonna use the SVG. Now with this one, I do need to turn him so that he is sideways so that I can fit the print. I'm gonna click on these little arrows here to turn it, and then I'm gonna hold control on my keyboard and that's gonna allow me to turn him so that he is turning evenly in a better way. The next thing I need to do is of course resize. So up at the top, kind of very similar to design space, we have a width, a lock, a height, and then a measurement. Now this is measured in millimeters right now, but I'm gonna click that down arrow and change it to inches. The next thing I'm gonna do is lock that button. And so now what we wanna do is change our width to 8.2 because that's how tall he's technically going to be. And you'll see that he's 9.78, which is just about the same size that he was in Cricut Design Space. Now you'll notice that he's not fitting in my block correctly. That's because mine defaults to an A4 size paper. So what I'm going to do is go to File, Document Properties, and sometimes it opens way over here in the side. Just pull it over. Change that to US letter 8.5 by 11, and then just close this out. 
you'll see that it fits better now and that's exactly how we want it to be. Go ahead and get that set into your paper and then we need to mirror this. So you can either do it one of two ways. You can use the flip option just like we did in Design Space. Up here there's these little triangles or we can do it with our printer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click File and Print. Now I'm gonna change a couple settings. First, I wanna make sure that I have my ST4000 selected. That is my Epson printer, which I changed over to sublimation. Then I'm gonna to go to Preferences. I wanna make sure that Letter is selected. And for this, I do select Borderless. It tells me that the print quality might be smeared or something, it never is, but I'm just gonna click OK. Then I need to change my quality to high, which isn't always an option when you do borderless. So if you just stand, do standard vivid, it comes out just fine. Then I need to go to more options. I wanna turn off my high speed print and I want to mirror my image. Then I do one more setting and it seems to help with my colors. I go to custom up here where it says color correction and then I go to advanced. Under this, you'll make sure color controls is selected under color management. Where it says color mode, change that over from Epson Vivid to Adobe RGB. Make sure that the gamma is at 2.2. Click OK, click OK again, and go ahead and print. We're cutting out our StarCraft SoftFlex right now. And what's great about the SoftFlex is it's super easy to use, super easy to apply. This cuts on the everyday iron-on setting, and you're gonna put this one carrier sheet side down onto your machine. I'm going to cut out the three separate colors and then we can get everything weeded and then I'm going to show you the difference in applying this versus applying sublimation. There are a couple of things that you need to know about the difference between HTV and sublimation. The first thing is what kind of material you can place both of these products on. Sublimation needs to be placed on to polyester fabrics or materials that are coated with polyester. The cool thing with sublimation is that it can go on all sorts of different surfaces as long as they're made for sublimation. So everything from tumblers, coffee mugs, coasters, shirts, bags, so many things, as long as it is made for sublimation, you can place this kind of a design onto it. Now when it comes to HTV, which stands for heat transfer vinyl, but can also be known as iron-on, it is really just made for fabrics. You'll see a lot of people who will say you can put it on hard surfaces, but that's not what it's designed for. It is designed for fabrics and will perform its best on a fabric. Now again, the fabric content for HTV or iron-on can just be just about anything. You'll want to stay away from fully spandex or fully model because those will tend to scorch. But you can use everything from cotton to polyester to polyester blends. When it comes to sublimation, the higher the polyester count, the brighter your colors are going to come out. I've done all the way down to 50% polyester, but those do tend to look a little bit more vintage and lighter. So if you want a super bright color, 100% polyester is the way to go. Now the other thing to note is that with sublimation, you need to use light colors, like whites, light grays, and things like that. Anything that has any color to it is going to distort the color of your image. Now there are ways around that with using bleach, techniques, and things like that, and I do have some bleaching videos that I'll link in the description down below for you in case that's something that you want to look into for using colored shirts. But you're going to get your best and most bright results using pure white shirts. HTV can really be used on any color, which is fantastic, and HTV comes in tons of different colors, so you're really able to match your color shirt with the HTV that you want to use. You can use everything to the darkest blacks, to the whitest whites, and every color in between when it comes to HTV, so that really does open up a realm of a lot of different fabric colors that you can use. When pressing sublimation, you really need to have a heat press or an easy press to work with that. With HTV, it's a little bit easier because you could use a home iron if that's what you have available. But sublimation requires a pretty high heat, 
For shirts, typically anywhere between 385 and 400 degrees is required for about 60 seconds. Now if you're doing other projects like tumblers, mugs, other things like that, it is going to have different heat settings, so you're going to want to do your research to figure out exactly what that product requires. And usually the manufacturer of that product will give you that time and temperature for that item so that you get the brightest and best image that you possibly can. Now with HTV, the time and temp is going to change based on the brand that you're using. For this video, we're using StarCraft SoftFlex. That presses at 285 degrees for about 8 to 10 seconds with a medium to firm pressure. But a brand like Caesar, if you're using Caesar Stretch, requires 320 degrees for about 20 seconds with very firm pressure. And it just really depends on the manufacturer and who you're using. So you'll want to make sure that you look up that information before you start to pressure HTV or your iron on. It's also really important to note that if you're using a Cricut Easy Press, the settings that are listed in the app and on their website for the Easy Press are based on Cricut iron on temperatures. Those are not going to work for your other brands, so you're going to want to make sure that you're using the branded information and not just the Cricut. Another thing that makes sublimation a little bit different than HTV is the amount of colors. You can literally use every color under the rainbow and you'll be able to use those colors mix them, have shading, lots of great things that you can do because you're not limited to what color is available. With HTV, you're limited to the colors that they create. Now obviously there's hundreds and hundreds of options with colors, but you're not going to be able to get the full rainbow spectrum from HTV. So if you wanted a color like this, but just a little bit lighter, unless the HTV exists, you're not going to be able to make that happen. But if you wanted to use a full rainbow, Every color under the sun, sublimation is definitely the way to go. Sublimation is also going to offer you a lot more details to your images. So if you have a picture and it's got lots of shading, lots of colors, it's going to be a lot brighter, a lot more colorful by doing a sublimation design. HTV would have to be layered with different colors of HTV to achieve the look. And not only would it probably be fairly thick to layer, but you're not going to get that same shading and definition that you would by using sublimation. Now, cost-wise between the two, I have to say that I think they're pretty much the same because you need to buy a printer, ink, paper, and the blanks to use with this. And then this, you'll need to buy HTV, whatever cutting machine you want, the blanks, and weeding tools and things. So I think they both average out to be pretty close to the same as far as cost-wise. So what I would always recommend is think about really, if you can only choose between the one or the other, think about what you want to make, the colors you want to use, how much work do you want to put in, and that kind of stuff. And also, where are you going to get your designs? Are you somebody who designs your own things, or are you going to buy them from the internet? There's a lot of options, so just kind of do some research and think about what you want to make. Now, as far as time it takes to create these, the sublimation is a lot faster, because all you have to do is get your design, size it, print it, press it, and you're done. You don't even have to cut this out, which makes it super simple. Now with HTV, it's a lot more work because you need to find your design, upload it, size it, cut it, weed it, then you're going to need to press each layer individually for your image. But again, I don't think it's a ton of work and I think it's worth it if that's what you're into. There's just a lot of different options when it comes to HTV and with sublimation. Now I bet you're thinking, well how does sublimation work? It is a really cool process. So what happens is your sublimation printer will print your ink onto your special sublimation paper. When you place your image down onto your shirt and you place it face down, when it heats, the ink that is on your paper turns to a gas. That gas actually physically dyes your fabric or your coating and that image is permanent on your shirt. It's actually dyed into the fabric. So the cool thing is it won't fade, it won't peel off, none of that. It's probably gonna actually outlast your shirt. Now with HTV, how does HTV work? HTV is a vinyl product and it is made with a heat activated adhesive on the back of it. So when you are using your HTV and you place it on to your shirt and you heat it up, the adhesive warms up and it bonds to the fabric. Now you're going to be able to feel HTV on top of your fabrics and you won't feel sublimation on top of your fabrics. That will feel just like a regular shirt with nothing on it 
where HTV will have a texture and a feeling on it because this is placed on top of fabric and sublimation is fused into the fabric. Now, is there a right or wrong between sublimation and HTV? Absolutely not. You use what you like and what works for you. Or you can be like me and use them both. It's really up to you what you like to do and how you like to craft. There's definitely a market if you are a seller for both types of items, so I wouldn't think that you have to choose one over the other. Just whatever makes you happy and whatever makes you feel like you like to use it the most. Now another thing that I want to bring up is environmental things. So if you are using HTV or sublimation, how much trash is left behind? We're going to find out at the end of the video. I'm going to have a pile of each just so that we can really see maybe which one's going to environmentally impact a little bit more than another. With sublimation, you're going to need a few more supplies because you're going to need butcher paper and heat tape. With HTV, you can use a reusable Teflon sheet. There's no need for any kind of throwaway sheet. So that's one thing to think about. But you do also have to weed off additional HTV left behind. You also then have the carrier. With sublimation, you'll have the butcher paper, the tape, and the paper. So we're going to take a look and just kind of see. Another thing to note is that polyester is a synthetic fabric, and it's not going to break down in a landfill. So your shirt is going to sit in that landfill pretty much forever when you're done with it. Cotton shirts that I would use with HTV, those will eventually biodegrade, so it's a little bit less on the environment as far as waste is concerned. If that's something that's important to you, be sure to stay tuned to the end to see which one has the bigger trash pile. I've never actually compared, so I'm pretty excited to see. Now I'm excited. We're going to go ahead and weed this. You guys already saw me print and cut everything, but we'll get this weeded out because that'll keep those trash piles to the side. And then I'm going to show you how to press both of these on to your garments. We're using a 100% Cotton Hanes brand shirt. So I'm gonna lay this down onto my press. I have a clamshell heat press, love my clamshell. And what I'm gonna do, I like to make sure this is good and straight on here. And then we're gonna lay down our first layer. So this is the first layer that goes on to our shirt. We're just gonna get that lined up. I'll fit it all together first, just so I can make sure that it looks good the way I have it. And then the jelly part goes in here. And this way you can kind of get an idea of if it's centered, if it's where you want it to be, all of that, and make sure that it's as straight as you need it to be. I just like to set it all down just to kind of double check it. Then from here, go ahead and peel off the first two layers that we placed down. So we're going to start with our blue layer. Now when layering HTV, you press your first layer for just a few seconds. So I've set to 285, and I'm just going to press this for just a couple seconds. I have the pressure way too high. I didn't turn it down from the last thing I pressed, so I do need to change that. But I'm going to go ahead and press fine, so I'm going to peel this. And then I like to let this cool a little bit before I press my next layer because if it's still really hot, it can lead to bubbling in your lower layers. So we'll let this cool off a little bit before we place our next layer down. So once this is pretty cool, we can place our next layer. So that's going to be our pink layer. So this one, I just want to make sure I get the jellyfish on. So I'm not really worried about the word don't right this second, like he'll get placed better in a second. But first thing I want to do is get this jellyfish all lined up, that looks good. And then the don't should fall just perfectly where I want it to anyways. So again, we'll press this one for just a few seconds. And since I actually fixed the pressure this time, it'll press just fine. So again, just a couple of seconds, and then you can go ahead and remove your um, HTV carrier sheet here. 
And we'll do the same thing. We'll let this cool off. I love these colors. They're really pretty. But we're going to let this cool off because, again, it can cause some bubbling if you're not careful within the extra layers. Now that that layer has cooled, it's time to place our last layer. So when doing layering, you want to make sure that you do the last layer for a full press. So really, for this part, I'm just going to focus on where his little face is laying because the jelly part does cover part of the bee and part of the little tentacles. So the kind of cool thing is, is that I can use my sublimation print just to get a good idea of how that's going to line up. It's not exactly the same, but I'm okay with that. So we'll go ahead and press this for that full 8 to 10 seconds. Now I have my heat press set to 12 just so that it doesn't beep. It really bothers my animals when it beeps, so I just try not to let it do its final beep. So I go ahead and just pull it before it beeps. Then again, you just remove that last layer and you're all finished with your HTV. So between allowing this to cool between the layers, doing this HTV took about seven total minutes. So we're gonna see how long it takes to do the sublimation versus how long it took to do the HTV. We're ready to do our sublimation shirts. The first thing that I do is I run a lint roller over where my image is going to be. That just removes any kind of hair that might be on there just to make sure that it's fully clean. The next thing that you wanna do is take a piece of butcher paper and you wanna place it inside of your shirt. Typically I would do this over on the table, but just for ease of you guys seeing every step and us having a good time so that we can see how long it takes, I'm going to do it all on the heat press. So you wanna make sure that that butcher paper that's inside of your shirt takes care and covers every part of where your image is going to sit. Now, I will be honest, I don't love the feel of polyester, um, which is another thing to think about, is if you don't like that feeling, but you're, it might not be for you. Then what I'm going to do is take my image, and I want to set it face down onto my shirt, and then you're going to need some heat tape to tape this down. So what I like to do is I will sometimes take my image and fold it in half, just so I can get a better idea of where the center is on my image and then I get it all set with my shirt. I wanna make sure it's about three fingers down. That looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and put some heat tape on. I typically just tape the four corners just to make sure that it's held down. Then you wanna grab a second piece of butcher paper, place it between your shirt, between your paper and your press and now we're going to press this for 60 seconds at 400 degrees with a medium pressure. Now that it's beeped, go ahead and lift this off. Now, warning, this is pretty hot. So I'm going to show you why you need the butcher paper. And hopefully you guys can see. Do you see the like in print of the image? That is some of the ink coming through from the paper. So it's really important that you have this. So we'll go ahead and... We're going to grab our picture and we're going to take off the image from the shirt. So fun! Really, really cute. So this one total took us 3 minutes and 42 seconds. So obviously quite a bit quicker to do this sublimation. So I'm going to go ahead and let these both cool down and then I'll show you the two shirts side by side. I've got both shirts side by side. This is our HTV shirt and this is our sublimation shirt. Now again, you can see obviously there's going to be a color difference because I'm limited to what colors I have on HTV versus what colors I print on my printer. Now, trash pile wise, I've got both the trash piles kind of behind the shirts and I truly feel like you get a little bit more trash with the HTV as well as I feel like the HTV trash is probably a little less environmentally friendly because it's a lot of plastic where the sublimation is mostly paper so that should, in theory, biodegrade pretty easily. So that's something that makes them a little bit different as well. This one, again, you can really feel on the shirt. It's a little heavy. Can you hear that? So you can really tell that it's on the shirt. And then this one, there's no sound because it has dyed the fabric of our shirt. The other thing I wanna show you is stretching them because you'll see a big difference when we stretch. So if I stretch the sublimation, you'll see that it just stretches just fine with the shirt. There's no issues. The image just stretches along with the shirt. But then if I'm to do the same with HTV, it's not going to stretch as well. And it's going to look puckery if it's stretched on somebody's body. 
So you can really see a big difference when it comes to a stretch test as well. So if you're wanting something that's really going to stretch along with you, sublimation is definitely a great option. HTV is another super great option. I hope that you learned some differences between sublimation and HTV. If you have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer your questions. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss out on any of the fun, correcty content we have coming. There's so much fun stuff coming out that I can't wait to share with you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And as always, happy crafting.